Hello and welcome to my new video. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I know this video should be about the updates on this board, and as you can see, there has been a lot of progress being made. Uh, however, the last video hasn't worked as I expected. Actually, it has been almost two days. Since the filming of last videos and since the uploading of last video, actually, and until now, until the filming of this video, the only view that that old video got is me checking it, like working properly. So it has been uploaded properly. So well, that's not called that a success. So. I just made a change of change of plan. This video, I know I promised to explain the the Z80 and its secrets in this video. Uh, so this video should be about the processor here, but I guess things like YouTube algorithms. Doesn't like me claiming I just like invented the most advanced Z80 computer, like as the first video since like a year ago, like as if I'm some kind of kung fu master in those films who just came out of a cave meditating for a year and just somehow realized the best kung fu in the world it, it doesn't work like that and i believe that this board this video not this video this board has been a project actively developed since probably sometime earlier than those three previous videos which is a really long time, and I really just just started soldering a few weeks ago. Actually, seriously soldering this stuff. I I've, I've done a lot of preparation a long time ago, and it started and stopped. It. But it's not the topic here. It's not the topic today, and the topic today is let's see if we can get it into focus. This thing, because I mean, change of strategy. I'm just going to throw a whole bunch of projects that I'm intending to do up on YouTube and see which one got the most attention or any attention at all. As you can see, this is just a sketch, like drawn up. In probably half an hour, <laughs> but the Dragonfly CPU is basically a project that I've been working on for almost a year. It's not as remotely as old as this Z80 project, but it's quite a mature one. What inspired me to do this video is another video on YouTube claiming that. <laughs> The uploader, the YouTuber, has developed the most advanced 8-bit system, and I say, "Wow, that's <laughs> that's a big claim, right?" And he's not even using a Z80 like this one. He he's using a homebrew 8-bit pipeline CPU, and it is mind blowing seeing that CPU. Absolutely smoking the Commander X16 in the Mandelbrot like benchmark. It is, it is just kind of a technical marvel to me. So yeah, and I see, say, well, you claim it to be the most powerful 8-bit CPU, then well, I'm going to claim the most powerful. 
homebrew CPU because sadly the Dragonfly is a 16-bit architecture and I mean 16-bit I mean it is very 16-bit it's got 16-bit register it's got 16-bit ALU it's got 16-bit data bus address bus it's even got 16-bit instructions and although this instruction is totally developed by myself it is heavily heavily inspired by the risk 5 and thus by MIPS so yeah if you are seeing some similarities that's why and the Dragonfly CPU is actually because it's risk so it's actually a lot simpler than the pipeline 8-bit microprocessor or like macro processor because it's built around discrete like 7.4 LS series gates so and the Dragonfly is not pipeline but I'm intending to implement a like an instruction prefetch mechanism like the 6502 and because some of them some of the people out there are claiming that the 6502 has a pipeline so if that counts as a pipeline then it's got a small pipeline but most of Dragonfly's instructions should be completed in one cycle one single cycle the only exception should be branch instructions and that's the intention and that's how I designed the circuit um, yes I, I actually got the circuit design but I don't know whether this is going to get any attention so <laughs> so anyway so how about the, the the architecture I know that pipeline Z not Z80 the pipeline 8-bit system is has a, a hundred more than a hundred like part series which start at exactly this point at a uh, architecture explanation or introduction or something basically I'm doing something similar here this is the dragonfly CPU because it's, it's the title it doesn't mean that the CPU is just a box it, it holds these three units basically the ALU arithmetic and logic unit the register file and the control unit that's that's what like von Neumann did that's what I'm going to do and that's basically it so let's first look at the ALU the ALU has eight instructions it has add basically addition you add two numbers sub subtraction you just minus a from b or subtract a from b or do a minus b and no need for further uh, further explanation and there's logical and logical or and logical exclusive or and if you find that familiar you are right this is built around the 74 LS 381 and 382 or 382 381 like what, what whatever you, way you like to call it basically these two chips or in uh, well in, in practice you choose one one of them but these two chips are just vastly more advanced than the more commonly seen and more commonly used like 181 chips so that's good that's very good and it contains three more instruction because it has like three bit uh, like opcode so that means like 2 to the power of 3 is 8 instructions but I find the 3 other instructions basically useless because because the first inst instruction is actually B minus A which I call like inverse subtract in sub so that doesn't make sense because I use like a 3 
three number like instruction basically you can just like do it in the instruction encoding itself a minus b and b minus a and there is a clear command basically makes the chip output all zeros doesn't make sense either because a, a, a tweak or a trick in the register file that we will discuss and there is a preset command which basically makes the chip output all one basically out f f f f f f f f f in hex like yeah but I don't think that's very useful so I I swap those for logical shift right arithmetic shift right and logical or arithmetic shift left basically left sh shifting does not care about whether it's logical or arithmetic so that fits in this gap just perfectly <laughs> so and all the shifts are by one bit I try to make multiple bit and then when I design the circuit and actually lay the PCB I found that I spent half literally half of my like chip budget on just trying to make a multiple bit shift circuit and make it fast enough so that it's done in one cycle and it's terribly difficult to design and terribly to lay the circuit so I basically screw it I'm just going to do one bit shift and it's it's basically common practice during the 1970s in the like mini computers basically if you look at like data general nova and I don't know about the PDB series because there are too many of them <laughs> like incompatible or semi compatible architecture so I don't know about the PDPs but I think the PDP8 doesn't have a multiple bit shift instruction or does it have a shift instruction I, 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 I don't know I think it does <laughs> because I think it's one of the <laughs> eight instructions or it just use that uh, like operate instruction and do it in microcode I, I, I really don't know and I'm not pretending that I do although I study a little bit about PDP for reasons that we will discuss later so yeah but I definitely know that Data General Nova shifts one bit at a time and it basically can shift the result each time an arithmetic like operation is done but I don't want to use that because I find it like less like practical than a dedicated shift command because basically if you want to do shift you are doing shift so I believe that if you are pre programming data general nova you are going to do a lot of like meaningless like operations just to use that shift bit to shift your result yeah I, I hope that my accent is not so terrible that the YouTube just censor my shift <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I, I really don't know